Welcome to episode 23 of the Medical Device Success podcast and videocast. I am Ted Newell, your host, and I'm also the host of the MedTech Leaders Community Online. Today's program is titled, Making Your Virtual Presentations More Powerful. We continue to offer solutions to the challenges that MedTech professionals face in the COVID era. One of the biggest challenges that we face is in terms of communication, especially in the sales process. Today we have David Parody with us of thinkoutsidetheslide.com. He has been a guest on the podcast before. However, this is also a video cast, so you can go to the Medical Device Success YouTube channel to actually see how to implement these techniques and tools that he will share with us today. At the end of the live presentation, Dave made a paradigm-changing comment. He said that those that learn how to use virtual presentation tools more effectively actually have more selling and communication tools at hand than they do in a face-to-face -face presentation. So if you are prepared, you have an even greater opportunity to succeed in communicating your point in this virtual environment. Want to be the first to experience these subject matter experts live and ask them questions? Then try out the MedTech Leaders community. There's always a 30-day free trial. The theme of the community for the next several weeks is going virtual. And I have at least three more subject matter experts lined up to share their expertise with the members of the community. Now, links to Dave's website, the Medical Device Success website, and the MedTech Leaders community site are all in the show notes and may be displayed during the, the video cast. So let's go learn some new presentation techniques and tools. Dave Parody has been recognized by the media and his clients as a presentation expert. He has authored 10 books on effective PowerPoint presentations, and his ideas have appeared in publications around the world. Dave is one of fewer than 10 people in North America recognized by Microsoft with the Most Valuable Professional Award for his contributions to PowerPoint, Excel, and Teams communities. His focus is on helping corporate professionals visually communicate the messages in their data so that they don't overwhelm and confuse their audiences. He is a highly rated conference speaker and delivered more than 400 customized training programs around the world in the past 21 years. We were having so much fun in the warm-up to the video cast that I forgot to push the record button. We were laughing about some of the statistics that he shares on his website in his last annoying PowerPoint survey that he does every year. And so this was for 2019. It is funny and sad, partly sad because I have made some of these annoying PowerPoint mistakes. Dave, the ultimate professional, diplomatically reminded me to start recording. It's great to have Dave back. We are going to jump right in. Of the uh, the value. And if you want to go ahead uh, on the sharing and uh, allow me to share my screen, uh, that's, again, one of the things, folks, that you want to make sure is when you're using your tools that you understand what are the limits, what are the restrictions on sharing and make sure that you've set them properly. So I'm going to go ahead and uh, share my screen here for everybody. And when we're talking about our presentations. There are three areas that I want to go through today. And uh, the first of those is the equipment that we use. And we're going to talk about virtual presentations and the equipment that, that you might want to consider. And the first thing I want to let you know is I think there might be a really good reason you should bypass the headphone jack on your laptop. Now, why would you ever want to do that? It just, you know, I plug my headset in and I, away I go. Well, 
Headphone jacks are one of the sort of weakest points in any sort of computer. And the reason for that is, is because, well, it's a relatively cheap part and, and they put in kind of whatever they, they have. And if you've been putting your jack in and out, in and out a whole bunch of times, it can sometimes get loose. And I've seen them fail more than once. So one of the things I suggest you consider doing is to start using a USB to headphone jack adapter. And this is the one that, that I use there. What I'm gonna do is uh, I'm just gonna go over and uh, I'm gonna put this into the, uh, the chat for everybody, that link, so that you have that. Okay, let's just time out. So notice what I just did there. I wanted you to have a link. I had preset that link up in a text box. I just copied it, pasted it into the chat, and now you have direct access. Think about doing that if you wanna send somebody to a page or a specific document on your organization's website. You can do that. So we're gonna come back and talk about the headphone jack. Why do you wanna bypass it? Well, because again, it is that weak point and this adapter allows you to plug into a USB. That means it's going to be digital. That little uh, part of it there that looks larger, that has actually got a sound chip in it, a Realtek chip in it. It usually gives you better sound, especially if you have an older laptop, these chips are newer chips. So it's what I use all the time and I had people tell me right away at when I started using it that they get much better sound out of the, the microphone that I'm using, the headset that I'm using. So that's one of the things that I want you to, to think about using. And the next thing is, is a second display. Now it would be great if we all had multiple displays across our, our desks. It's not always the case. And if you just, you know, you were, you were quarantined at home and you didn't have a chance to bring a bunch of stuff with you, maybe uh, getting an extra monitor is not so easy delivery wise. One of the options that you have is you could add a display using your iPhone or your iPad. Yeah, so you can do this using a, uh, an, an app called Duet Display. Again, I'm gonna drop that into the uh, chat there for everybody. So what Duet Display does is it runs an app on your computer, Windows or Mac, and it runs an app on your phone. Now it is a paid app on your phone or your iPad. Um, <clears throat> here it costs about you know, 10 to $15 typically. And then what you do is you connect your, your iPhone or your iPad to your computer via the, the regular USB cable that you normally connect it to anyways. And then you run Duet Display on your computer and then you run it on your device. And what, the, what happens is, is it connects your device to your computer as an additional display. Why would you want two displays? Well, there are a lot of reasons for having two displays. Two displays allows you to put your presentation on one screen and have other content on another screen, whether it's your notes, whether it's uh, some additional information, the CRM information about this particular prospect, whatever you want, it can be on that other screen. And it gets around that challenge that some people have of, I've only got my laptop screen. I don't have any other screen to work with. So the photo here is a photo of me using it um, when I was doing a meeting. This particular organization uses a web meeting platform, which works best when you share the entire screen, not sharing just a window. So for them, what I did is I put the presentation on the iPad. I wasn't interacting with it. Anyways, I wasn't teaching PowerPoint that day. I was just showing slides. So that I can send out to them. And I have the rest of my scheme, screen available for my notes and whatever else I want. So really consider about whether this is a way that you can create a second screen for yourself when you don't necessarily have one. The other thing that people have had a tr some trouble getting a hold of, webcams. We were talking about this, Ted and I were talking about this before, and uh, webcams have been incredibly difficult to get a hold of. There is a way that you might be able to use the camera on your phone as a webcam. And it's an app called DroidCam. Now DroidCam, again, it is an app that you have to install on your computer and on your phone. Now both of these, the DroidCam and the Duet display that I just talked about, if you are part of an organization where IT locks down your computer, it's unlikely you're gonna be able to use these because you can't install the, 
part of the system that works on your actual laptop computer. But if you can, what DroidCam does is again, you wire your phone to your computer using the USB cable. And when you run DroidCam on both of them, it turns your phone into a webcam. And so here is a screen capture of a video from a client where I was demonstrating DroidCam. It's very, very good quality. And it gives you a lot of options as to where you put it. You notice I have mine, I put it there just on a, a selfie stick that has the, the little holder for your phone on it. You know, those things are really cheap. Uh, you can pick those up anywhere. It now gives you an opportunity to have that webcam high quality that you want. And you don't need to spend a lot of money because DroidCam is actually free. It doesn't cost you anything for either the computer part or the phone part. So when it comes to equipment, those are some of the pieces of equipment that I would have you consider using when you're thinking about up in your game in virtual presentations because virtual presentations are here to stay. If you think this is just a, you know, only a few months and we're going to get back to everything as normal, it's not going to happen. So we need to make sure that we are always looking into what's the best way that we can take our game and up it when it comes to virtual presentations. So those are some of the pieces of equipment to look at. Now let's get into some of the actual PowerPoint uh, topics and creating slides for your presentation. SlideZoom is a really great way to allow you to show a slide that has the key message on it, but also be able to jump to a detailed slide if somebody asks you about it. So here's an example here. We have a study published, shows 82% success rate in using this treatment. Somebody might say, well, okay, study. How many people were in it? Uh, what was the geography of it? Well, you could dump everything on the slide, but as you know, as Ted just talked about the survey surveys I do, tell me that audiences don't like that. It's way too much information. So instead, what you can use is called slide zoom. So I put it on the screen here. I'm going to actually demonstrate. We're going to build this live for you. So we're going to insert what's called slide zoom. And now I got to make a point here. Slide zoom, and we're going to talk about another type of zoom just in a moment. It refers to a feature in PowerPoint. It is not the meeting platform zoom. Okay, so this is PowerPoint. So it doesn't matter what meeting platform you use. So I'm going to get out of slideshow mode here. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to add this to our slide. So what I've got is down at the bottom of my presentation file here, you notice I in my appendix backup section, I have the study parameters. So I've got this detailed slide, I've got all the geography dosages, all the, the stuff that somebody might ask. So what I'm going to do is on this particular slide, I'm going to on my insert ribbon, I'm going to insert a zoom called slide zoom. So what slide zoom does is it allows me to pick a slide to zoom to. So I'm gonna go down, I'm gonna select my study parameters, my detailed slide here, I'm gonna say insert. And by default, what it does is it inserts an image of that slide for you to click on if you wanna to go to it. Now, I find that, you know, I, I don't wanna see the, the slide image, but if you right click on it, it allows you to change the image. And it allows you to change the image, I'm gonna click on that, to an icon. So the icon that I tend to use, these are built-in icons in, in PowerPoint. The icon I tend to use is an arrowhead. So I'm going to start typing in arrow, and this is the one that I want here. It looks like a very uh, nice sort of symbol moving to the right, as in sort of next slide. Now it's quite large. What I'm going to do is I'm just going to make it a lot smaller, and I'm going to move it down to the corner here. And uh, if I want, I can, I can take off the, uh, the outline. There's a very light outline around it. I can take that off if I want. But you can leave it on in case you might lose it. See, now when I put my slide into slideshow mode, I can go through. And now somebody asks the question. Down there in the lower corner, you just think that that looks like a, a little arrow to go to the next slide, but it doesn't. So I'm going to move my cursor down there and you notice cursor changes to the pointer finger, uh, like clicking on a link on a website. I click on it and it zooms in to the details. 
all the details. We can talk about it, whatever we need. We need done. And when we're done, just press the up arrow on my keyboard and it comes back. So it allows you to very quickly and easily answer that question with facts, not guessing, but answer it right away with a detailed slide. And it keeps your presentation slides nice and clean and focused on that message you need to deliver. And there is another type of Zoom that I did say I wanted to talk about. And this is one that on our podcast, Ed and I talked about it. And it allows you to use a nonlinear approach to your presentation, a nonlinear approach that allows you to jump wherever the prospect wants. So what we do is we set up the file, the PowerPoint file using sections. We're gonna see that in just a moment. We've got an introduction that we give to our topic. And then we have a menu, a menu of different choices that the prospect has, areas that they may find important. And you're prepared to go in whichever direction they want because you can go between the various areas, whatever order you want, it's up to them. And you can always jump back to the menu using shift up arrow. So you might be part way through a section, they go, yeah, okay, that, that's okay, go, go back to the menu, I wanna see another section. No problem, just shift up arrow and you jump back there. And the way we do it is insert summary zoom. So what I'm gonna do, I'll get back out. And what I've done is I've created sections already for almost all the parts of my presentation. So you'll notice the section here, this is creating slides, and then I'll scroll down. My next section is delivery. And the only one I haven't set a section for are my action items, because I wanted to show you how to set a section. So we've got our slides. I'm gonna right click on this slide and I'm going to say, add section. And then it says, what name do you wanna give it? So I'm gonna type in action items and say, rename. So now I've named all of the sections of my presentation. I'll go back up to the top and I'm going to put my slide zoom right here as my agenda, if you want to call it that. So again, I'm going to go to the insert ribbon and I'm going to go to the zoom. And this time I'm going to say, I want a summary zoom. So what a summary zoom does is it allows you to select what are the sections you want to go to. Now it knows if you've created sections, so it automatically selects those, which is, which is handy, but you don't want to accept the default all the time. So we don't need, we don't need the first section being the, the very first section and we don't need our appendix as a section to jump to. We'll just use these four, it says four slides selected. So we've got these four and I'm gonna say insert. And so what it does is it inserts a slide that has images for the, each of the sections using the first slide in that section. So here's a tip, you may want to actually add a photo to each of these section divider slides so that it looks even nicer than what I've got. Now I can put up here, uh, menu of areas to discuss. So I have my menu here. So what happens is I, I go into my presentation. So I'll go from the start, I go to my next slide and say, hey, um, we talked about that. Where would you like to discuss first? What would you like to discuss first? They say, oh, okay, you know what? That second one, creating slides, that's really important to us. Okay, excellent, no problem. I simply use my cursor and I click on that slide and it jumps right to this section. Now, I simply start going through my slides the way I want. I can go through and maybe somebody says, okay, that's enough, let's go back to the menu. Again, no problem, I just go shift, up arrow, and it comes back to the menu. So this gives you that ability to decide what sections you wanna to go to. You've built the sections in your slide file, and now you can create it as a menu. And again, that's automated. I just simply said, insert summary zoom, and PowerPoint did all the work. So it's really easy to be able to do this. It's not a lot of effort, okay? And Dave, so that I, is our summary zoom. Dave, can I jump in for just yeah, a second? Yeah, please. So in preparing for the podcast, uh, which is about four weeks or so into my podcast series, the reason this came up or this particular uh, technique came up mm -hmm. is because in sales, in a virtual presentation, we're talking about a sales process mm -hmm. where we're going through several different steps. And when we're talking to, let's say, a doctor or some other healthcare professional about a product or service that we have, um, instead of leafing through slides in a virtual presentation, then flying through them and back 
which you mm -hmm. see all the time in face-to-face -face presentations. People jump all over the place. Instead of doing that, which is confusing and it looks unprofessional, it's, it's almost the unprofessionalism of it is amplified in a virtual presentation. And so using this Zoom feature here gives some of the opportunity that if they've hit a hot button in a conversation with a doctor, then they can go right to that section and talk about it and they don't have to get tied down going through all the other uh, parts of the side presenta presentation, maybe talking about features and benefits that the doctor or the head nurse or whatever is not even interested in. Um, you can go very quickly, very professionally where you need to go. And I just thought this was a terrific um, PowerPoint tool. Yeah, and the fact that it's built in, and again, you do that little bit of discovery up front, and then you go where they want to go. Because they're probably going to be more interested in what they want to know than everything that you know was put into your deck. And I'm going to have another tip on dealing with that in uh, in a later section, Ted. So we're going to get to another another way to go to where they want to go. Awesome. Okay. So that is summary Zoom, and what it does is it allows you to have that non-linear approach. Another technique that I want to talk about is the ability to do essentially a tour of an image. See, we're not able to physically hold something anymore or get them to touch something because of the restrictions we all have in place for safety. So instead, we're going to have to use images. How do we use them in a way that we can essentially take them on a tour? So if I'm talking about this piece of equipment, three new features, a more comfortable eyepiece, increased zoom ratio, and temperature controlled glass. How do I take them on a tour? Because what you don't want to do is just take your cursor and start waving it around or the laser pointer tool or something like that. What you can do is you can use a feature of PowerPoint called Morph. So what we do, is we duplicate the slide, crop and resize it, then Morph transition. So let me show you how this works. So I'm gonna take my slide and I'm gonna duplicate it. Okay, tip here, Control D. Control D for duplicate, so much easier. And it's one click and you're done. So my first new feature here is the more comfortable eyepiece. Now that's this area of the image here. So what I'm gonna do is I've duplicated the slide. I'm going to select this particular image. I'm gonna to go to the picture format ribbon. And on this ribbon, I'm going to use crop. And what the crop does is it allows me to crop just on that one area that I want to show the prospect about this particular feature. I'm going to say I'm done cropping and then I'm going to make it much larger because I want to point out some specific things about this eyepiece. I can also delete this text here. I can delete this and I can make this maybe a little larger as well and bold so we can see it. Now that all works quite fine. Here's the magic. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna to go to the transition ribbon and I'm going to use a transition called Morph. And it's gonna preview it for you here. And then we're going to build another slide so you can see it. But when we click on this, the preview shows you that it's that beautiful zooming in. And when you take this slide, and I'm gonna duplicate it again here. And what I'm gonna do is I'm now gonna change the crop. So I'm going to go back to my picture format, go to crop, and the next piece is about the zoom. So I'm going to now move this to the zoom part, let's say here, and now I'm going to maybe crop it even more. Close that, make this even bigger, and uh, so our text here is our uh, increased zoom ratio. So I'll copy that text into this box here. And again, the transition, because I copied the previous slide, it has the morph transition. So let's see what this looks like when it goes into slideshow mode. So I start with slideshow mode. Again, that was my tips on how to do it. So first thing I wanna talk about is the more comfortable eyepiece. So I click and it zooms 
much larger to that eyepiece. Now the next one, the increased zoom ratio up to 120 times. Notice how we visually, we panned across that image. And again, we're not doing it. We, we have very little effort we had to put forward in order to get PowerPoint to create this beautiful transition. And it allows you to now take a product image and pan across it, pointing out various spots in a large image when it's much easier for them to see that much larger image. That is so cool. Yeah, and it's, and it's built in. I mean, you saw how little effort it took me to create that, right? So it's a really, really great feature to be able to use to pan across. So again, all we did, I'll do the third feature, which was the temperature controlled glass. So I'm gonna duplicate my slide again. And this time I'm going to go and I'm going to change my crop. And maybe this time, uh, this is zoomed in too much. So I need more of the original image and maybe in a slightly different sort of look to it. So I'm gonna move that down here. And now when I go into slideshow mode, so I had my zoom in on the zoom ratio of the piece of equipment, I click and it comes back out to show us the glass. It allows you to do some really, really creative. I've seen designers do some incredibly creative things with this feature in PowerPoint called Morph as a transition. And I highly encourage you to start looking at where are the opportunities that you have within your presentation to take advantage of some of these features. Next feature I wanted to talk about are videos. Videos are now going to be more and more important in our presentations because we, we don't have that live demo opportunity anymore. We just can use videos. And I'm gonna encourage you to use silent videos. Why silent? Well, silent videos allow you to give short videos, short videos that you have more control over. See, when you use a silent video, you don't have to worry about the audio sharing settings of the meeting platform because by default, I'll tell you that the two main meeting platforms, Teams and Zoom, do not automatically share the audio portion of a video when you are playing PowerPoint. You have to specifically share that before you get into sharing. I mean, you can do it afterwards, but it's something you have to remember. And if you don't, nobody hears the audio. You can record this easily. You do not have to have some professionally produced video. You can record a video on your phone. You could have it silent or not. I'm gonna talk about in just a moment, videos that do have sound in them. And this might be a good opportunity for you to do a screen capture video of your website or of some software that you want the prospect to know about. How do you use this? So first thing is give an introduction. You have to give an introduction to your video so that your prospect has context for what it is about your, you're about to show them in the video. And then customize the narration for them. So whatever you're gonna explain, customize it for them. And again, because it's silent, you have this opportunity. At the end, the video will stop at the end, the last frame of the video. So reinforce that when you come back. So let me show you an example of this. So this is an example I use when we're creating waterfall charts in Excel. If you don't know what that is, it doesn't matter. But what I'm trying to do in this particular video is show them how you can make certain segments in the chart, quote unquote, float in midair. So here's how I set this up. Now folks, remember I said that this chart is gonna be created using a stacked column graph. And the SAC column graph allows me to put a segment from the baseline up to that segment I want to float in midair. So let me show you how we do that. So in our stacked column chart, what I'm going to do is I'm going to select this segment, which is the spacer segment. And I'm going to go to the chart format ribbon. I'm going to set the fill color to be no fill. And that makes it disappear. So now you can see those red and green segments appear like they're floating in midair. They're, they're actually not, there's something below them, but because it's set to no fill, it's invisible. And so this is one of those techniques where you use an invisible element 
to position a visible element. See, I can customize my narration. I can continue my narration after the video is done because it stops on that last frame and allows me to have that flexibility to whatever I need for this particular prospect. So you can certainly create your own videos, but what about a pre-recorded video? Your organization has a selection of videos that you can use. How do you use a pre-recorded video? Well, first of all, I suggest whenever you put that video into your PowerPoint presentation on that slide for that video playback, I always suggest you check that little box that says play full screen. And that'll do what you just saw me do, which is where the video takes over the entire screen so that it's biggest in size, easiest for the audience to see. So always say play it in full screen mode so it's easier to see. And then if that video already has audio as part of it, and most of the videos you're going to get from your organization will already have audio. Again, in the video playback, in the volume section, you can drop that down and you can click this item called mute. And what that does is it turns it into a silent video. And the final thing is, make sure you're only playing the segment that you want. Once you have put the video into PowerPoint, in the editing section, there is an item there called trim video. And what trim video does is it allows you to decide when should the video start and when should it end. Now, it's not deleting those parts of the video. So don't worry, you're not, you're not deleting the file. All it's saying is when you play it in PowerPoint, start from this time code and stop at this time code. So it gives you that flexibility. So when the audience sees it, they're only seeing that segment or section that you want them to see. So feel free to take those pre-made videos that your organization has already created for you and use them. Just some tips here to make it easier especially in our virtual world. Videos can be a challenge in a virtual world. So we need to be careful and use them only when necessary. That's why I showed you the morph because the morph can almost act like a video putting three, four, five slides together. It could really substitute for a video. If you find that the bandwidth is giving you some problems or the videos aren't playing quite as, as cleanly as you would want them to play. So those are some tips on creating slides. And then I wanted to just share some tips on uh, actually delivering your presentation in this virtual world that we find ourselves. And the first is do not be locked into just your slides. My brand is think outside the slide. Ted talked about that. Don't think it's the only thing you can share. You can share other things. So share a website. So I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna switch sharing and I'm going to go to uh, my browser here, and I'm gonna share my browser. And you'll notice what happened is, is I'm now sharing a window, I'm sharing a specific window from my computer, and I can now take you on a tour of the website. So if I wanted to show you where a specific item was on the website, a particular uh, document that you can look at to get some details, or a survey to take, or a quiz to take, or pricing, whatever it is, instead of just using a screen capture, actually take them to the website and show them exactly where it is. So, you know, Ted was talking about, here's the podcast episode and there it is right there. Okay, so you can click on it, it will load it, shows you here's the, the you know, anything that you want because it is the full website live in your presentation. Take advantage of this. What this does is it also breaks up your presentation from just being slide after slide after slide after slide. It gives you that opportunity to give them some visual variety that engages them in the presentation far more than just sticking to your slides. And this wasn't possible in live presentations because you're probably not connected to the internet. It's difficult to do. And for those of you who are doing presentations where you actually had a meeting room, you're not actually close to your computer. Now you're incredibly close to your computer. In fact, too close for some people's liking. You're close to your computer, so take advantage of that. Feel free to move outside of your slides. So I'll go back and share my uh, screen here. And I'm just gonna comment on this is that yeah. uh, a huge advantage of this is that 
a lot of uh, med tech companies do have some really good resources at their website. Mm -hmm. And so this is, I like the fact that you break up the presentation. You can take the viewer to a website that has resources. So it helps also reinforce the brand. And then the salesperson or the presenter um, can reach into that website, maybe grab a resource that they want to share with the viewer, and then they can go back to their slides. That's right. It gives you that opportunity to engage your audience. And so instead of just talking about it, show it live. Now, notice what I did. I had that website loaded in my browser before we ever started. So this does take some preparation. Think about it in advance. So all I needed to do in Zoom here that we're using is I shared my browser window. That's all I needed to do because I had it preloaded. Another opportunity to engage is to use Excel to show calculations. So when you've got some uh, calculations that you might need to show them, they might ask questions. For example, equipment financing. That's the example I'm going to show you with. Yeah. So instead of guessing, what would the monthly cost be if I added the extra storage option? Instead of guessing at it, show them. So again, I've preloaded this Excel sheet in Excel, and I'm going to switch my sharing to share that Excel window. Now, my Excel window is up there, and you might say, Dave, it, it's a little small. Well, Excel text is always small, so zoom on it. Two ways to do this. One is you can use the Zoom slider, and that's in almost all Microsoft Office applications. Or in Excel specifically, you can hold the control key down on your keyboard and use your wheel of your mouse to zoom in. So it's an easier way to do it sometimes. Now, I can answer the question. So if you want the extra storage, oh, no problem. So let me just copy the extra storage cost here, and you'll see the total updates. And oh, OK, so the monthly payment will be just over $18.73 per month. Is, is that going to work in your budget? We've answered the question right away with fact. We haven't had to guess. We haven't had get to get back to them later on. We've answered it with fact. So I think about this is a, this is another great example of how a virtual presentation is different than a presentation like in a face to face presentation mm -hmm. in a room because like you were saying with the share screen feature that you have in so many of these platforms, you could pull this uh, spreadsheet up. So, but it does, it does take practice. I mean, the, the people that are making these presentations have to practice making these transitions. That's right. And, and, but the Ted, you only need to practice if you want to be successful. <laughs> right. And, and I think, I think, you know, we're talking about med medical device success, right? That's why we're sharing these tips with you, because these are tips that are going to help you be more successful in your role. You want to answer a question? Answer it with fact. That's how you're more successful. Yes, you have to learn some of these techniques. Of course you do. But we're demonstrating them for you, and you're starting to see what's possible. When you know why you want to use it, I know you're going to put the work in to learn it. All of us do. We all do that. It's human nature. So that's how we can share our Excel to answer the question that they're asking with fact when it's calculation based. And this is especially important when we're talking about costing. So as I said, you can zoom in using the slider or the control mouse wheel. Now, Ted talked about jumping to, to different areas of your presentation. Well, you can actually jump to any slide you want in slideshow mode. And you can do this using thumbnails. So the, the key you need to know about is control minus. So you hold the control key down and you press minus on your keyboard. And what happens is, is it now goes to the thumbnail view. The thumbnail view allows you to scroll through all of the slides. And if you have broken it into sections, as we did here, you'll notice you have a section menu over here on the left hand side. And you can jump to any section very quickly and easily. You can also jump to any slide. So if I wanted to jump uh, back to, you know, the start of this section, I can just simply click on that slide and I'm there. So it combined this with the summary zoom that we talked about, with the slide zoom that we talked about, 
And for example, somebody asks a question about that detailed information, but you're not on the slide that has that slide zoom. Not a problem. Control minus, you go down, click on it, and there you go. Now, if you're concerned, but Dave, if I press control minus, they're gonna see all the slides and they're gonna see me go to the one that, you know, aren't they, aren't they gonna be sort of, you know, annoyed by that? My opinion, absolutely not. In fact, they're gonna be excited about the fact that you're answering their question with the best possible answer by using a slide that has that best possible answer on it. So this is yet another technique you have to customize the presentation on the fly. You don't have to have set this up in advance, you just use it. So as long as you're in slideshow mode, which most of us are in our presentations, just control minus, zooms out, gives you that thumbnail view. And if you have sections set up, really easy to hop to those sections as well. Okay, so those are some tips around the delivery of your presentation. So our action items wrapping those up so we have some time for our Q&A today. Your next steps, identify what are those opportunities you've seen in our session today to improve your virtual presentations. If you're using everything that I talked about, that's awesome. My experience is we're all pretty new to virtual presentations. I've done an enormous amount of work to figure out how can we make the best of the technology that we're all having to use now. So you're gonna to have to learn the techniques. I demonstrated them for you. That's why we record these sessions. So you can watch them again and walk through, pause it, try it out on your own computer, play a little more, pause it, try it out. That's why I actually did these techniques live in the software so you can actually learn the techniques and implement them. If there's some equipment that I talked about that you think, hey, you know what, that would be really valuable for me to get. Take a look at getting that equipment. Now, remember if you're in a corporate environment where they lock down your computer, some of those might not be allowed. So always check that with your IT department before you start investing in a lot of equipment. And, and Ted talked about this already, practicing. This is gonna take some practice, but I'll bet everything in your career has taken some practice for you to get good at. I know it has for me, I'm guessing it is for you as well. So practice these techniques so you're comfortable with them and can use them without stumbling through. We've seen so many people stumble through these virtual presentations. You will set yourself apart when somebody watches you use these techniques and goes, wow, that was really effective. I'm gonna take a serious look at that either piece of equipment treatment, whatever it is that you were talking about. And then most importantly, deliver winning virtual presentations. Just because we're in a virtual world doesn't mean we can't be effective. I think in some ways we can be even more effective than we can in an in-person presentation. Because as I've demonstrated, you have all these other opportunities available to you in your virtual presentation. So Ted, I'm gonna, I'm gonna stop there and uh, give people an opportunity for uh, asking some questions in the chat. We do have the chat open. And uh, of course, I don't know, uh, Ted, if some of what I talked about has given you some more questions that you wanted to ask. Well, one thing, I, I've got a couple comments. And one comment would be that, um, and this is, goes back to a podcast I did some time ago on uh, some, uh, a research study on trust or credibility of salespeople or mm -hmm. credibility of sources in the decision making by a buyer. Right. And overall, across all industries, uh, the buyers trusted sales representatives only 30% of the time. Uh, they trusted proof sources and experts, you know, more 50, 60, 70% of the time. But we, the sales rep needs to have this trust. And I think it's mm -hmm. really critical that the, uh, a great presentation helps deliver that credibility and, and deliver that trust. And that's why I think this is so important. Some of these tools are so important. Awesome. Absolutely. Well, Dave, Thank this you. has been terrific. Really terrific. Thank you. Thank you. I'm, I'm, I'm really hoping that, that the people who were here live and the people who are watching afterwards are really going to be able to take some of these ideas and implement them because I really feel for virtual presentations, you have to recognize 
it is different and it actually gives you more opportunities in my opinion than the in-person presentations do. So take these ideas, work on them, practice them, and deliver those successful presentations. Well, let's wrap this up because I know that we've taken a little more time than um, I told you we'd take, but Dave, again, really terrific. Thank you so much. And I'm going to get this uh, produced and ready to go and uh, share it with the rest of the community because a lot of people had other obligations they wanted to attend, but um, they couldn't attend at this particular time of the day. And there's some people on the other side of the world too that are interested. Excellent. Very good. Thanks so much right. for inviting me. Well, thank you. It is great to have Dave back, especially in this video format, so it is easier for you to see how to apply his advice and make your presentations and your presence online more effective. There are several helpful links in the show notes, so be sure you take advantage of those. Now I'm going to challenge you to be a true professional. And if you'll forgive me, I'm going to use a sports analogy. All around the world, we love our sports professionals and sports heroes. Why are they in professional sports to begin with? Because they study their playbooks. Then they practice over and over and over again until their plays are second nature. And when there is a change, like playing another team or another individual that has different strengths and weaknesses, a sports professional analyzes these and then they make adjustments so they can adapt to those strengths and weaknesses and they practice anew. I challenge you to do the same. Take what you learned today, pull up a PowerPoint presentation you have been using and enhance it to better meet your challenges. As Tom Hanks says in the movie A League of Their Own, there's no crying in baseball. Well, there's no crying in any profession. So get to work and go win your week. <laughs>